My name is Linda Bacchanani, and welcome to my show. My guests today are both with Homemaker Healthcare, one of our United Way of Central Missouri agencies. Jeff Buecher is the executive director, and Katie Hanna is a very special volunteer who has joined this organization with some specific purposes. Guys, welcome, and thanks for joining me. It's always fun to be together. It's been a while. Thank you. Thanks for having us on your Good show, Linda. Here. It is our, my pleasure. Uh, Jeff, I think it's important to remind our audience because many people may remember Homemaker Health Care but not realize what you all do. So let's talk about the agency a little bit. Tell us what you do. You bet, Linda. Um, Homemaker Health Care has actually been serving Jefferson City for over 40 years. Um, what we do is we have an outreach program for senior citizens that are living independently in their own homes and we provide walkers and wheelchairs at no cost um, through the generosity of our community. And we do that for people that are living on a fixed income that are struggling just to keep up with the daily uh, rents and, and meals. And when a health care cost that comes up, um, you know, sometimes can really put you on, uh, you know, a situation or down a path that you don't want to be down. And we come in when insurance or Medicare or Medicaid does not pick up. Uh, the cost for these particular items. A lot of times the senior citizens will just choose to go without them, which makes for an unsafe situation in the homes. And how the program works is a lot like a library. Uh, we go out in the community, we look for these items that are sitting in basements and garages. Um, we take those items, we clean them up, uh, we service them and put them in a warehouse and then social workers, uh, doctor's offices, um, nursing homes and places that have day-to-day -day contact with individuals that may need these types of equipment know about our program and then uh, can come out, use our services, pick up these items and then get them into the homes uh, where they're actually needed. So actually they deliver them. We do a lot of the delivery oh, ourselves. I was, I was gonna say, hopefully. We do. Um, we have a, a full-time individual that works for us and she does a lot of the picking up of the items, uh, the delivery of the items, as well as a lot of the service on that. And we're really grateful to have her on board because she's been with our organization for almost 13 years. That's great. That's it's good because she's got a good background. Number one, number two, she knows many of the locations of where you can acquire these items. I'm assuming. Well, and it does take some time to understand because what we're trying to do is keep senior citizens that are living in their their own homes safe. And it's just not about getting a piece of equipment in there that they may need. Um, it's also about surveying the environment. A lot of people have throw rugs. I love mm -hmm. throw rugs. I have them in my house. But you know that's the number one trip hazard. Uh, in a home, so the first thing that we do when we go in and deliver a piece of equipment is also do an assessment on site um, and make recommendations of you know a situation just like that. So it takes it takes a lot of time for an individual to understand um, exactly what they're looking for when they go into a home, um, and it's just not you know throw rugs. You also have to worry about extension cords. Yes, a lot of times they'll run across uh, you know right where you walk down a hallway or someplace, and rerouting a lot of that uh, type of stuff is really important with the program that we do. And you know, I think that's a wonderful reminder to those of you uh, in the audience to keep in mind, even at a younger age, uh, we're talking about senior citizens here, but even at a younger age, these can be trip hazards. Now, that doesn't mean that, that you can't have them in your home, but just be aware of that. The other thing is, and I picked up on this pretty immediately when we started talking, and that is, if you have any of these items, wheelchairs, walkers, any of canes, any of these items that are sitting in your basement or you see uh, aren't being used, uh, give Homemaker Healthcare a call and donate them. Thanks for mentioning that, Linda. One of the things that I do when I go out and I talk to groups, um, my mother doesn't like it because I kind of throw her under the bus <laughs> on all of this, but uh, when my grandmother passed away, um, you know, she had these items and my mom took it because she's starting to get, uh, you know, closer mm -hmm. to an age where she may need some of this and she put it in her basement and I told her, you know, I said, mom, why don't we take these items, put them out into the community. You don't know whether you're going to need this or not. Right. And, uh, you know, her comment was, well, you know, if I need it, I want to be able to have it. So that's actually where we came up with a program to help people that, you know, are sitting on these items is if they donate them, we keep a record of who donates and they're able right. to come back to the program as well and get an item. And a lot of times it's going to be a newer item because, you know, there is an age sure. limit on Absolutely. some of this stuff. 
So, you know, don't be afraid if you've got these sitting in your garage, your basement or shed to give us a call. Um, and if you're worried about needing them in the future, we're going to make sure that you have the items that you need. That's great. And by the way, uh, the phone number for Homemaker Healthcare is 573-635-6603. And keep that in mind. Katie, I think your story is an amazing one. First of all, talk about your new program or the new program that you're involved with. So the new program that's a new initiative with Homemaker Healthcare is called the Caring Chair. And it is where we're gonna provide an electric lift chair for patients who are undergoing, um, who have undergone a mastectomy surgery that are facing breast cancer. So I'm a breast cancer survivor and I was thrilled to learn about Homemaker Healthcare and the services they provide because after undergoing a mastectomy myself, I know the importance of you know being able to get up and down. And I thought providing a lift chair to you know other people that are going through the same situation would be a wonderful idea. And there's nothing like this around here. And as a, a survivor, mm -hmm. uh, you have experienced that uncomfortable feeling of being not being able to get up or not being able to get up and down comfortably. Exactly, and. You know, I think this is a service that people might not realize they need right away. I know after, you know, going through my survey, it was kind of the last thing on my mind. But then when you get home and you're trying to get independent, you're trying to learn how to move, you know, your body that's been kind of reformed at this point, you could really use some assistance. And that is where I'm looking to help people. And well, how did just how did this get connected to Homemaker Healthcare? Linda, it's actually an amazing story. Um, we were contacted by a person that we work with whose sister had gone through um, a double mastectomy, mm -hmm. and uh, it was in another town that had a, a program and said, you know, Jeff City could really use something. Um, we were already doing that. We already had lift chairs. Uh, we were providing a, this exact same service for senior citizens because a lot mm -hmm. of times, you know, after surgeries or shoulder issues or problems, right. you know, they need this type of thing. So we were already set up for this exact um, type of a program. And at about the same time that we were learning about, you know, another need in our community and how valuable that would be for uh, individuals that are going through uh, this type of a surgery, um, Katie had come along and was doing some volunteering with us at the same time. You and were a volunteer. I yes. didn't realize that. <laughs> yes. That's so, how we met. Yeah, so so Katie and the program came to us at the same time, so I don't, I don't think it's an accident. Um, it was meant to it be. It was meant to be. Mm -hmm. What were you doing as, as a volunteer prior to this? I mean, just helping out? and Just helping out wherever he needed me, you know, whether it was kind of behind the scenes or, you know, um, being support for the Capital City Festival of Lights. I was there and so we got to be close and then he found out I was a breast cancer survivor and was seeking to do more with the community and here came here along this idea and, and we here we go. The idea of the program that was being bounced around at the same time and it was just a it was a fit made for for what our community really needs. That's exciting. It is. And and by the way I will uh, share some information that I learned about Katie. She has a business degree. Uh, she is has been in school, just graduated not too long ago, and is now going into radiologist, uh, radiology, excuse mm -hmm. me. And so this, this works out well uh, for long term as well. Right. Because you can give him some advice and he can keep you posted. Exactly. Right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, I, I believe that, you know, nothing happens uh, out of uh, just, you know, uh, a whim. There's always a reason that it happens and, um, and Homemaker's mission has always been to be there um, for the community and to assess the needs that are in the community and to adapt to meet those needs and this is one of those exact programs um, you know that's becoming very popular uh, as well as um, you know just being able to expand the number of people in the community that we service. Um, it's a little bit outside of what you know we normally did because we primarily uh, focused on senior citizens sure. living independently at home. And when this idea was you know brought to us as a program and another way to help individuals, uh, and it matched up with what we did, it was just perfect. You know, I, the quick question, and I don't think I know the answer to this, Jeff. What is what is your territory? We cover um, the easiest way I explain it is if you would take a coffee can and set it down on a map, every county right around Cole County that it touches. We okay. service. Okay. Um, there's there's 13 counties uh, that we go. So we essentially, we go down towards the Lake of the Ozarks, up as far as Fulton, uh, down by Lynn, Missouri. 
Um, but, you know, if there's somebody that's out there that has a need, we're going to try and find a resource for them. Um, you know, we're not going to uh, deliver way out of town because we just don't have, you know, we're, we're small. We have one employee uh, that works, and the rest of us are volunteers, um, that's great. including our board of directors. That's great. Um, but we've, we've helped people from even out of town locate equipment that they need. And once again, I'm going to share this information with you. Uh, the phone number for Homemaker Healthcare is 573-635-6603, or you can visit their, their uh, www.homemakerhealth.org. So you can visit them online and learn a lot about this program. We're going to take a break right now. When we come back, we're going to learn a lot more about some of the ways that you can help Homemaker Healthcare. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Mm hmm two o'clock, okay. Your employees who serve in the National Guard and Reserve may seem different. They may work a little harder, be more confident, more willing to make the extra effort to get the job done right. So when your employees need time off to serve, remember, it's not just good for our country, it's good for your business. Glad you could all make it. Welcome back and thanks for staying with us. My guests today are with Homemaker Healthcare. Jeff Bucher is the Executive Director and Katie, Han Katie Hanna is a wonderful volunteer that's relatively new to the organization. So guys, thanks again. I always tell people how much I appreciate, but, but it does take time for you to do this. So we appreciate it. Jeff, we, we talked earlier about your clients. Most of them are senior citizens but now it's changing a little bit with your new program. Uh, who is eligible? Do you have eligibility requirements and are there fees or how does that work? I'm, I'm glad you asked that question. Um, and I'm gonna start off with a statistic. Um, I, I read not too long ago, and I believe it was in the New York Times, one in three senior citizens over the age of 65 uh, will fall in their home this year. Wow. And, th and that's a huge number. And the scarier part of that is the article went on to say that um, a fall in the home is the number one cause of serious injury or death, uh, mainly due to you know falling, hitting somebody uh, mm -hmm. your head or a broken hip. Um, we're trying to prevent that sort of thing from happening by making this equipment available to individuals that either one can't afford it, um, and not because you know they may be living below the poverty level, but because they've already got. Um, you know, things allocated for a fixed income. Mm -hmm. You know, once you get to a certain age, um, you know, or, or health condition, you're not working any longer. Right. So what either has been set aside or you're getting um, from some sort of a subsidy, you know, from Medicare, that's it. Um, and that has to cover, you know, the, the basics that you need for your, your daily living. And if you don't have the access to insurance or if Medicare or Medicaid doesn't pay for this type of equipment, that's when we step in. And we rely on the generosity of the community and we've been doing this for a long time, um, over 40, 40 years. years, that's right. Uh, but these programs are becoming extremely popular in other communities. Uh, a lot of communities are starting to open up uh, outreach programs like this because what they found is when an individual has access to this type of equipment, then they can stay independent in their own homes for up to 18 months. That's a year, wow. that's over a year longer that somebody can live in their own homes before they have to, you know, seek some sort of other, you know, arrangements or if worst case, uh, you know, scenario, if they happen to accidentally have a fall uh, or end up, you know, having to go to the hospital prematurely for something that could be prevented. Sure. And that's what we're doing. Do you have a waiting list? We used to have a waiting list, Linda, and we really got together with a bunch of our volunteers. We came up with some ideas and some strategies on how we were going to um, address the waiting list for this. And as of right now, everybody that has uh, requested an item has been able to um, receive that item. That's great. That's oh. great. F funding is always an issue. I know that. Funding as is... a non-for-profit, uh, you're constantly faced with trying to make sure that what you want to accomplish, you have the financial, uh, the finances to do so. Where does the majority of your funding come from? 
The majority of our money comes from United Way, and oh, okay. we have been a United Way agency for probably real close to the entire 40 years that we've been in existence. And the reason that it works well for you know us being a United Way agency is because everything stays right here local, Linda. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we don't have any uh, dues that we pay to a federation that, that go out of this community. So every dollar that goes is donated to United Way that is, is allocated to Homemaker Healthcare stays right here in, you know, not only Cole County or Central Missouri area, right. and goes right into these types of programs. Um, our entire board of directors, Katie, um, are all volunteers. I'm a volunteer. Um, we just have the one paid person because we need somebody there that's going to be there day to day, um, eight to five, answering the phones, uh, picking up the equipment, delivering the equipment, and making sure that uh, the the you know program runs efficiently on a daily basis. How can the community help? Obviously, I'm, by giving financial uh, help, but. but what other ways? I'm glad that you asked that. One of the biggest things that we need are volunteers for a program that we have. And right now is the perfect time of year because um, rummage sales and auctions mm -hmm. are getting ready to start. And we find most of our equipment at rummage sales and at auctions. And it, and it makes sense. Um, what happens a lot of times is if um, grandma or grandpa passes away, um, you know, they've had this type of equipment and it's sitting there and families go in to help clean up the estate and they have an auction or a sale. And so what we have is a, is a team of volunteers that enjoy going to rummage sales and auctions. We give them one of our business cards and we just simply ask them, hey, if you see one of these items, will you just tell them about our program, let the person knows. And I will tell you, I, I'm going to use 99% of the time, but I think 100% of the time actually, um, we didn't have to buy that item. They just say, here, take it. It's yours. Love the program. I'll bet that is the case. Yeah. And, and as you say, with uh, rummage sales, but I, I, I say garage sales, there's a ton of garage sales every weekend in our community, our expanded community. Uh, so that would be a wonderful source of It is. Help. And, and, and the more people, if, if, you're, a, if you're a garage sailor, um, and you would like to help our organization, we would greatly appreciate that. Um, and, and there's nothing more that you have to do other than come in, pick up some business cards of ours, uh, leave them there. Um, if, if you want to pick them up, uh, the items, and bring it to us, that would be fine. If not, then, uh, you know, we send somebody out to pick them up. And sure. that's where we get the majority of our equipment. You asked about a waiting list earlier. Yes. Um, we did have a waiting list on the number one item that we need, which is bedside commodes. Oh, okay. And after any sort of a surgery or, you know, once you're confined to bed, um, having access to a bedside commode is almost essential because the long walk uh, to a bathroom in a bathroom is an extremely dangerous and slippery place. Absolutely. Um, you and know, sometimes not comfortable from uh, if you're on a walker or any kind of... Yes. And... Um, a lot of accidents happen because people have to get up in the middle of the night. Um, their primary caregiver or a family member that's living in the house with them um, isn't there, so they, you know, get up on their own. And so this is certainly is one of the ways that volunteers can help. O other other ways. We've got a lot of ways for volunteers to help. Um, <laughs> an another one of those is simply picking up and dropping off items. Sure. Um, you know, a lot of times uh, we try and group them together so that. Uh, when Sarah goes out and makes her deliveries and her pickups, uh, that we have somebody you know that's not out of the office for too long because we are a, a one-man shop. Everything runs on volunteers, so we volunteers just to step in and uh, help man the office from sure. time to time. Um, if anybody is mechanically uh, you know handy, uh, we do go through every piece of equipment that comes in because we want to make sure that it's working, that it's uh, you know the way it and, should be, and cleaning it, and and, and uh, being right good stewards of that piece of equipment. That's right, and so. Um, there's a lot of work that uh, we have and we could use volunteers um, at just about every aspect or level. So if you're interested in volunteering, uh, we'd love to hear from you. Keep that in mind and once again all you have to do is pick up the phone and call them. Katie, how did you become associated with this group? I mean, did you hear about it before? I had heard about Homemaker Healthcare before and was really impressed with what they were doing and so when I originally sought out to volunteer with them, you know, I was just proud to be a part of an organization that, you know, was, sought, providing. was providing for yeah. the people and yeah. letting them be as independent and, you know, as well as they could be. Now, I know you're planning a big fundra a fundraiser That's later right. this year. Tell yep. us about it. Well, hopefully you've heard about the Capital City Festival of Lights. And it was the first year last year. Um, it's a, a Christmas-themed drive-through light park out at Bender Park. And hopefully everybody's been out there because it's a beautiful park that we have here in Jefferson City, but it's not used during the winter for very often. 
Um, you know, people don't go out and ride bikes and play Frisbee out there in the wintertime as much. And uh, we came up with the idea of putting through this drive through Christmas displays. And we had over a million lights out there last year. Wow. And um, it was a very, very big event. We're planning on doing it again this year. Katie helped with that last year, which is how uh, we got started. And, uh, you know, to, to warn the people that are out there, no good deed goes unpunished. So if you volunteer, we're going to try. <laughs> Well, I want to know, the uh, first thing that comes to my mind, Katie, did you have to hang all those lights? I did not. <laughs> <laughs> we, we have volunteers that did all sorts of different things out there, from setting up the displays to hanging the lights to taking money at the front gate sure. to um, giving out candy canes last year at the back gate. Uh, we also had Santa Claus and Mrs. Claus were out there several days. Um, and we've got some exciting guests that are going to show up uh, this Good. Christmas as well. Now, it begins... The first of December, or when? What's the timing? We go the entire month of December, okay. and we usually like to start right after the the downtown Jefferson City Christmas Parade. Mm -hmm. uh, we open that evening because um, that's what kicks off the Christmas spirit. That's and right. And we go through uh, the entire month of December, which gives people plenty of time to you know get out there and enjoy the lights. Um, it is almost a two mile drive through there. Um, so you and know, and there's a charge, but that's where you make your your. That's Fun right, days. Linda. There is a charge. It's $20 a car to go through. So what we encourage people to do is load up the car with as many friends and family because it's more fun when you experience this type of thing. Um, and you go through, but same thing. Everybody that's out there that uh, worked on this light park was a volunteer. That's great. And 100% of the money that we raise goes right back into the program to provide. Approximately PC. how much did you raise last year? Um, I think last year we raised just over $50,000. That's great. That's wonderful. The, uh, the, the trick to that sounds like a lot of money. Um, we purchased all of the lights and the displays and everything. So there was some So we put in there. Um, we haven't broken even on the project yet. That's all right. Uh, but we do plan to over the next few years. That's right. And you, and you didn't do it just for one year. You're we doing didn't. it for ongoing. This is going to so. be a Jefferson City tradition. That's great. Well, as you can tell, these are passionate folks about what they do and homemaker healthcare. If you, uh, once again, if you have any questions, go into their website. They've got a wonderful website, www.homemakerhealth.org. Give them some help. We look forward to seeing you all, obviously. Thank you for appearing, and we look forward to seeing you all again next time. Good night, and God bless. Mm -hmm.